Well, good morning, everybody. So we finally have an answer as to why the inverter blew up. Okay, so a little backstory in case you somehow missed the last video. My portable power station had been set up and working fine and I decided to hook solar up to it. And I did my first solar charging test. And during that test, it lasted about eight minutes. And then after eight minutes, all of a sudden it stopped charging. And I walked into the mud room where the power station was and there was smoke coming out the front and I tore everything apart trying to figure out exactly what is the cause of the issue and I couldn't figure it out so I started to reassemble the entire pack and when I went to put the inverter back in I noticed that there was little drips on the floor where the inverter was and so we opened it up and saw that we had several capacitors blown and there were others that were near rupturing. And so we knew after that the inverter was the problem. The inverter had blown some capacitors and that's what was causing all the smoke. Uh, I, I do want to thank everybody that uh, commented on the other video and gave suggestions, ideas, thoughts, explained how capacitors work, what's inside capacitors. You know, that's, that's really great because I can look inside and I can point out a few different pieces, but that stuff's beyond me. Uh, you ask me to fix your network or build a website, yeah, sure, I can do that. But uh, look at uh, different electrical components and know exactly what they're supposed to do and what they're made of, yeah, no. So I had received an email from Giondel with the tracking information on the replacement inverter because they said they were gonna replace it for me. And I had asked them, do you have any ideas as to what might have caused the capacitor failure? And I've had lots of comments on, you know, cheap Chinese garbage and stuff like that, but this, this inverter's been a nice little inverter for me. And I've seen other good comments from people on this one as well. So I was troubled, it was troubling that it had failed so early because I had had it less than two full years. And so they, they responded back and, you know, they said, here's, here's the tracking number for you. But then they also said, about your issue, this is due to long-term high input voltage or incorrect connection of the high input voltage, causing the capacitor to burst. Please carefully check the voltage of your controller and solar panel. What is the overcharging voltage set for your solar charge controller? And I'll have to admit, I was a little annoyed at that comment. I was thinking, I know what I'm doing. Why, why would they ask me this? And so I thought, all right, I'm gonna show them. I'm gonna take a picture of my charge controller. I'm gonna take a picture of my settings and I'm gonna send them and I'm gonna say, see, everything's set right, exactly how it's supposed to be. So come up with another answer. So I grabbed my desktop power supply and I hooked up the positive and the negative leads powered everything on and started to dial it up to 13 volts so I opened up Victron connect so that I could access the charge controller tap my portable power station and we can see Everything still works. Voltage is still pulling 13.1 volts. So let's look at the actual details of the charge controller. Hit the gear in the top right, battery. And as soon as I clicked that battery button, my heart sank through the floor. I knew exactly what the problem was and it had nothing to do with the inverter itself. It was all this stupid installer so I inadvertently had this set to 48 volts 
instead of the 12 volts that I was using. And that is correct. So it was all my fault. Boy, I could have kicked myself to high heaven when I saw that. Okay, so, so here's my, my limited understanding as to what exactly happened with the inverter. We had everything hooked up properly, and it actually was charging with 30 amps, exactly like it was supposed to be. And then when I left, I'm assuming the meter disconnected due to high voltage, which caused the charge controller to switch over to the absorption phase, which is a constant voltage of whatever it was, 54, 55, 56 volts, which is a whole lot more than, you know, the 14 volt maximum that this thing's supposed to take. So it held that for as long as it could, and then it just blew capacitors. And here I thought, why in the world would somebody ask me that stupid question? Well, I'm a perfect example of why they have to ask that stupid question. You know, it's, it's one of those things that you stop and think, you know, you get annoyed. You get frustrated when somebody asks you a question that you, you know the answer to, or at least you think you do, and you get frustrated because you think that you're above whatever that question was. You know, you're far past that, and all they're trying to do is help you out. I mean, I've seen a lot of problems on the forums recently, and some of them have to do with polarity being wired up backwards and a lot of little things that, you know, they seem like simple things, but in the moment we get so excited about testing what we finally built or, or trying it out or seeing if it works. And I think sometimes we end up moving faster than we should. And I mean, this is a perfect example. So that charge controller, I thought that I grabbed the charge controller that was set to 12 volts. But this was the one that I had used for in another, in another test on my 48 volt system when I was trying to get the system from switching back and forth from grid to battery and battery to grid when it kept doing that when the sun was low. And I know better. I should have checked the settings beforehand. But I didn't because I assumed. So I guess this is twofold. One, this is letting everybody know this is what happened. You know, we finally have some answers. But then also it, it has to do with just reminding people, especially especially new folks. But I mean, I'm not, I'm not a veteran in doing this at all. I've been messing around with solar for coming up on two years now. And everybody makes mistakes. You just gotta learn from them and move on. And so when I realized what I had done, I contacted Giondel and I said, all right, you guys can, you guys can cancel the warranty replacement because this is completely my fault. You shouldn't have to replace an inverter for somebody who makes this kind of mistake. And, and they said that they were glad that, they, that I had found the problem. They are gonna send me a secondhand inverter through Amazon uh, anyways. And so, you know, I'm very appreciative of that because, you know, they, they stepped up. They did not have to send me anything at all because this was 100% my problem. But they are. So thank you very much for that, Giandel. And thank you, Elsa, for, for getting back to me and working with me on this. Stupid stuff happens. Take your time, folks. Slow down. Double check, triple check everything before you flip that switch. Keep that multimeter handy because you're going to need it.
All right. I'll turn off the camera and kick myself some more. <laughs> but I'm going to let you guys go. Y'all stay safe, stay cool, and we'll catch up with you later.